Good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is Wednesday, and it is time for our daily devotion, so I want to invite you to come and join me as we take a moment to pause and center ourselves on God's presence in our lives today. I'm looking forward to spending a few moments with you, so I encourage you to come and join me. As you find us on the Facebook uh, page, if you would leave a quick comment and say hello, I would appreciate you doing that. If you watch this at a later time, don't forget to leave a comment and say hello. It is always nice to see who stops by for our devotions. As you leave your comments, I'll say good morning to folks. I want to take an opportunity to greet you um, as you gather for this. I'll also make a couple of other uh, introductions, announcements, kinds of things. Remind you that it's a pretty simple devotion format. We begin with an opening prayer. Uh, we read the scripture that's for today. The devotion is from the upper room. And so um, we'll read that um, and then take a moment to reflect on it. And then a few closing thoughts in the prayer. Good morning, Mr. Dunbar. So glad that you are here. Good morning, Linda, and hello, Susan. I am so glad that you can join us today. Been praying for you and hoping that you are um, are doing okay. Our scripture reading today, by the way, friends, comes from Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to read the first 11 verses, so Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Just kind of watch in Facebook. See if anybody else says good morning. Slow start for people today. Late start for Jim, slow start for everybody else. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Might be a small crowd of us to begin with. Surely somebody else will join. Usually happens that kind of way. All right, so let's begin with our prayer. Oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. The example of Jesus. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary in your souls or lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as children. My child, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, or lose heart when he you are punished by him. For the Lord disciplines those who he loves, and chastises every child whom he accepts. Endure trials for the sake of discipline. God is treating you as a child as children. For what child is there whom a parent does not discipline? If you do not have the discipline in which all children share, then you are illegitimate and not God's children. Moreover, we had human parents to discipline us, and we respected them. Should we not even more willingly, even more willingly, should we not, 
Should we not be, excuse me, wow, I can't read today. Should we not be even more willing to be subject to the Father of spirits and life and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good in order that we may share his holiness. Now discipline always seems painful rather than pleasant at the time. But later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. I may, I may need to get a larger font Bible at this point in my in my thing, right? So, by the way, saw a couple folks join. Good morning, Shirley. Hello, Barbara and Chris. Good morning, Mr. Longmire. So our devotion writer today is Steve Wakefield. Steve is from Alabama. His focus verse is verse 3. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Here is Steve's devotion for today. I loved coaching the eight-year-old Rangers Little League team. They learned an important life lesson during the season-ending tournament. The Rangers had yet to win a game, and the team and their parents couldn't wait for the season to be over. Fully expecting to lose, we played our first game of the tournament and won. The next day, we won again. The third game was against the best team in the league. They had dominated the league all season. Our team said, we don't stand a chance. But I told them anything is possible, and that is why we play the game. We won the final game by a landslide. As I can contemplate the lesson the Rangers learned that day, I am reminded of our passage in Hebrews where we are instructed to run the race that has been marked for us. Although we face opposition, we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses and should not grow weary in our efforts. We must never give up or lose heart. When we face challenges that seem insurmountable, we need only to place our focus on God and God's promises. Our God will provide the strength we need for what lies ahead. Thought for the day is when I focus on God, I will find renewed strength. You know, we live in a very complex and complicated world. Uh, we live in a world that is struggling. We live in a world that is anxious. It has its conflict. It has its tension. And we humans, like we naturally do, uh, we, threw, we throw more gas on the fire and just make it even worse, right? We don't, we don't do a good job of trying to figure out how to resolve things um, other than pressuring people into these kind of limited understandings of things. So you think about what's happening on our college campuses. You think about our discourse in our politics, our legal system, and on and on and on. What's happening in our communities and so much more. It is easy for us to have a defeatist attitude because of these things. That the world isn't getting any better. Um, that we don't stand a chance um, as a human race that we are doomed uh, to, to some kind of disaster, that we will we'll figure out how to divide ourselves and kill one another, and eventually we'll wind up in a wasteland. You know, it, it's easy for someone to, to conclude that based upon the way things are going on on the world scale and here at home as well. And yet this is a cycle that repeats itself over and over and over. It is not like this is the first time we've had this in our society. We've had it multiple times. This is not the first time that the world has been on the brink of whatever. We've seen it multiple times. What we need is a voice for reason and calm. And what we need are people who are focused on not the short term, but the long term. And to focus on God's presence in our lives, and God's promises. God promises that there will be a day when this world will be recreated in God's vision and image. 
a new heaven and a new earth, a new Jerusalem descending out of the new heaven, and that God will come to reign upon the throne of this earth. Uh, that we will be finding ourselves um, dwelling in this new garden that God will create. You know, these things are, are visionary of what is yet to come. And we as God's people need to figure out how to live more into the vision of that than maybe some of the defeat of the world around us, the trouble of the world around us. That we can proclaim that goodness is still around the corner and on the way, that we don't have to give in to evil and things like that. To be reminded that even though things look bleak, things are still improving in many ways, and we need to recognize that as well. And so take a moment maybe just to pause and think about something good that's happening in your world, in your neighborhood, in your life. And let's take a moment to give God thanks. And when you feel like you are, are giving in to some of the defeatism of of the world, that defeatist attitude is starting to creep in on you. Take a moment to pause and pray and find renewed strength in God who is present with you. So let's take a moment to pray. Gracious God, as we run our race, help us to fix our eyes on you and to not grow weary. Amen. Well, friends, thank you so much for being here today for our devotion time. I'm so glad that you take an opportunity to pause and do this with us. Um, great to have you today. Quickly want to remind you, if you watch this later, don't forget to leave a quick comment. When we conclude, feel free to share this on your own Facebook page as well. Take a moment to pause and pray for one another. I am praying for you. I hope that you are praying for me as well. I appreciate those prayers. Otherwise, I uh, pray that God's grace and peace might be upon you the rest of this day. And we'll look forward to being back with you again tomorrow for our devotion time. So come and join us. And by the way, good morning, Barb Meyer. So glad that you made it today as well. Thanks for being here today, friends. Look forward to seeing you soon. Peace and grace be upon you.